and welcome to another well sadly post unboxing video. I was trying to make unboxing video for this device. Unfortunately, my camera decided to quit on me very early in the recording. So practically nothing was captured. So, well, now we'll just have to do with unboxing the inner box of this really cool M5 stack Core S3 development kit. It's a fairly new device and I just got it for my Visuino development. So without further ado, I'll slide it out, open, and voila, here is the device. Let's get it out of the box and see what we have here. So this is ESP32 S3 based device. I'll quickly look here through the specs to get some idea what we can expect. Well, of course, it has ESP32 with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, I believe, is the S3 version. I'll have to check if Bluetooth is uh, available in it. It has 8 megs of RAM and it has touchscreen color display. One of the most interesting features that was not present in the previous core devices. And here they are, just for comparison. This is M5 stack core, the original one. And this is core 2, the second iteration of the core. This one has three mechanical buttons and does not have touch screen. This one introduces the touch screen. And if I recall correctly, this one also introduced microphone I2S, to be more precise, microphone, and it has I2S speaker, if I recall. So otherwise, the device were relatively similar. They had slightly different type of extenders. They are not shields, but they are like hats, I believe. I have to check what they call them in my M5 stack. So as you can see, you can unplug this one and plug another one and add functionality. One of my complaints was that this one, yeah, you need to screw it to hold it securely in place, otherwise it's kind of loose. This one, you leave this cover and the extensions, you mount them right here under this cover. It's a little bit more interesting design. Maybe you can also unscrew these bolts, lift it completely and use original extensions. I haven't looked into that possibility yet. He had unfortunately relatively limited amount of time to play, play with it. So now how do they compare with this third effectively iteration? At least as far as I am concerned, since those are the only three I have ever gotten. So this one is much beefier. All three of them, they come with batteries. This one, however, originally comes completely mounted. These two are intended for general purpose at home or just for enthusiast projects and hobbies. This one is made a little bit more professional and it can be mounted in factory racks if necessary. So you can program it as a POC controller. And similar to the first one, I'll put this to a side for now. Similar to the first one, you can detach the front from the bottom. I will show you this shortly, but first let's try to power it up. Before that, let's see what else is available. We started with the specs. So as we said, ESP32 color touch display camera is the most interesting new feature. Right here in the center, it has, it says 30 megapixels camera. Well, let's see, we'll have to see about that. It has a proximity sensor, which I believe is right next to the camera. And it has a stereo microphones 
two microphones left and right right here. Of course, it also has speaker. Both, well, all three of them actually, they have power management units on board. This one has a slightly different power management unit, which sure is going to make my life interesting when I start adding support in Vizuino, which hopefully should start pretty much today. And then it has six axis accelerometer, gyro, and compass on board. It has real-time clock. Yeah, I believe we cover everything according to what I can read here in the specs. So now, without further ado, let's before that, yeah, let's let's see. So it has one groove connector, again similar to the previous iterations, on the top. USB-C, all of them have uh, micro SD. It has LED here. I'm pretty sure. We'll see about that. And the bottom part has two more groove connectors. So it's much more practical than the other ones if you need to connect more sensors. And you can hook external power either with the USB-C or right here. So it has a variety of options. Here you can actually, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see about this. So let's power it on first here and then press this button. And here we go. It's booting up. Shall I call the cool features inside? Oh, I believe you have to touch it. Yeah, you have to touch it in order to move to the next page. So, here it has a touch screen that allows you to play with the different functionalities. So, as example, we can click here and run a Wi Fi scan. And here it discovers three different hotspots. can play with the camera. Quite cool. Oh, and it has the proximity sensor. You can see that it detects proximity on this bar here. Play with the microphones, left and right. Here we have power management and we can reconfigure it in different ways. I'll have to play with that. There may be even more options I'll have to see. Then we have the IMU and you can see that it shows both the bubble in the center it moves left off center left right up down as I'm rotating it and if I rotate it along this axis here the compass heading is not as good so probably I have a lot of metal around in the house so the compass doesn't catch that well the direction. So I will have to do with whatever we have. Next, we have micro SD. At the moment, I do not have any micro SD inserted, but uh, here it can list the files. Here we can draw with the touch, a simple draw. This is a multi-touch screen similar to the Core 2. Uh, however, this particular app doesn't show that functionality. And finally, we have I2C scanner that shows the different devices at different addresses. So this is about it. Here we can go to different modes of shutting it down. We can go to sleep, we can go to sleep for certain amount of time or we can completely shut it down. So I'll just shut it down. And there is optional switch here which disconnects this bottom part. I'll show you shortly what's in there. So what else is in the box? 
here we also have this little additional compartment where there is this back of and the back was sealed originally, but again, thanks to uh, my bad camera, now you have to do it unsealed back. So here there is hexagonal tool and some additional elements that you can use to mount it on rack. I haven't played with them yet. But here with this hexagonal tool, we can unscrew the bottom. Loosen all the bolts. Yes, all of them are out. And now gently unplug it. And as you can see, the extender appears to be very similar to the extender of the first iteration. I'm not sure if they're identical, but if not, they appear to be very close. So spacing and everything appears to be similar, if not the same. So it may be possible to use these extenders. Let me quickly test that. I haven't tried that yet. But yeah, it, it appears to be entirely possible to use existing extenders from the original core for this particular one. And here we have more information about all of the features which we mentioned. And now we can look at the bottom. Here on the bottom, you have the two additional grooves. There is a battery inside and you can feel it. So this is a quite a beefy battery that can power the device. And here you even have prototype area. And if you mount something on this prototype area, you can open these openings here and put some connectors. So you have quite some flexibility of what you can do once you buy it. You're not stuck with only whatever is provided here and the groove connectors. You can add your own functionality as needed for your projects. So that's about it in terms of the device and the quick unboxing. Now I'll put it between its older brothers. Put the bolts aside. And here we go. M5 stack Core S3 between its two older siblings. Now it's time for me to start working on the Visuino support. I have already started researching and playing with some of the libraries to figure out what I can do. And then I'll start writing my own libraries for the Core S3 and slowly start building and mapping the board. Hopefully in the coming days I will be able to make another Visuino release and we'll have a new very cool addition to it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you liked it remember please click the like button for me and if you really really want to see more such content and support the videos and the Visuino development please also subscribe. Have a good day everyone and let's go back to working on Mizuno. Goodbye!